Hey guys, my name is John Birch. Today I'm going to show you guys how to play Sparks by Coldplay. This is going to be a bit of an advanced tutorial. It requires a little bit of music theory knowledge, but I believe anyone can do it. So we're going to get started right away. So first of all, we're starting in a key of B flat minor or D flat major, if you'd like to call it that way. And B flat minor is basically B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, right? So it's almost pretty much all black keys except C and F. Right? Does that make sense? So pretty much what we're going to do is just base off all the chords. There's some accidentals here and there, a little bit of white notes here and there. So uh, yeah, so the intro is pretty simple. Um, all it is is a walking uh, chord progression that goes kind of straight up and it goes falls back down to create this kind of feeling of of hopelessness of lost you know so uh yeah so so let's start off with the first chord it's going to be a b flat minor seven so uh that's going to be the way i would play it is with the b flat on the bottom the a flat on the top on my thumb and then d flat f and then a flat so that's the way i would play it and that pretty much there you've started a whole song so congratulations you're you're pretty much almost there <laughs> i'm just joking of course but yeah so uh whenever you hit that chord you're gonna go ahead and do this kind of um kind of uh three four six eight kind of feel to it so i, I would just sit back and try to play around with uh the same chord b flat minor and kind of feel that rocking right because that's going to be the rhythm that we're going to be playing it's going to be all right so the next part or the next chord rather is going to be a b flat minor nine with the ninth on the bottom what i mean by that is that we're basically taking a b flat minor chord or seven chord b flat minor seven chord right we're just adding the ninth and that would be C in this case right but instead of using B flat in the bottom we're gonna bring our C to the bottom here so it kind of creates like an F minor over C kind of chord but um, in this sense it's a B flat minor 9 with a uh, the ninth on the bottom so how, how would you play that exactly? So here's how I would play it personally. So starting off with the first chord again, B flat minor seven. And then you would play basically essentially F minor, right? With a couple of sprinkled notes on the top. So I would play D flat major seven basically over C is what I would play. But in this case, it's, it's still B flat. Just so you could hear that. Um, B flat in the bottom, but essentially we're playing a D flat major seven over C. Okay, so it, it in this case in improvisation or learning a song, it's easier to think about chords in in, the, in its most basic form instead of trying to complicate it with okay, what is this in context? And and then you can go back later on and figure out okay, so this this chord is this because B flat's on the bottom. Or something like that <laughs> i'm sure that's confusing but you'll get it eventually okay so that's just the second chord right so we're b flat major seven d flat major seven over c and the next chord will be uh d flat major seven still with the d flat that's how i would voice it personally so right so just d flat D flat essentially and the next chord would be the same chord except you're just bringing that D flat to an E and then you're gonna add another note here and it's gonna be B natural and you're gonna create basically an A flat minor 6 over E flat right and this is a tension chord that releases um, or not so much releases but leads to the next chord which is g diminished so uh i'm gonna play from the beginning again and then we're gonna talk about g diminished so here we go right a flat minor six over e flat and the next chord is gonna be g diminished and how i would play that is this 
So essentially, uh, my app is telling me that it's G minor seven flat five, but that's essentially a diminished chord. And that's exactly how it would play. And I would hold out that chord. And then finally, on the next chord is gonna be a G flat major seven. So you're essentially bringing that G down to a G flat to create that tension and release. Right, so from the beginning again. Oh, congratulations uh, I would repeat back this video and practice those couple of chords uh, you're free to pause here and play around a little with that and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next part which is the uh, I guess second intro of the song and it just hovers between these two chords it's gonna be D flat major 7 and then B flat minor 7 right so I would play around just just with that just play around doing the same rhythm right so the most important part that people ask me to do is the bass line basically so um, a bass line goes a little bit something like this So yeah, so uh, let me show you real quick what I'm doing there on the left hand. So it's, uh, what I do is uh, D flat, an octave, and I go to the A flat, and then I do a um, kind of a grace note, D flat to E flat. So, right? And you're just gonna walk back down basically. So. And finally, the next part is going to be a B flat and then back to A flat and then do it all over again. So that's how I would practice it. I would just go ahead and do that over and over again until you get it underneath your hands. And then with the right hand, you're basically just doing chords. And I would practice your voicings here and try to figure out what works best for your hand shape. Um, some some people will just literally do D flat major seven, just the the simple chord, this most simple basic form of the chord, the root position of the chord. Personally, what I would do is add that and have it in, uh, I think, third position is what we would call it. So the C in the bottom, D flat major 7 with a C in the bottom. And in first position, B flat minor 7. And if you're not getting any of these, um, you know, terminology like second position, first position, that's okay. Just follow along uh, to the best of your ability. So again, here is the second part of the intro, and you're going to repeat this twice. So that leads us to the first verse of the song. So the melody uh, pretty much is, uh, I uh, what I did was listen to the song. Well, I've always listened to the song a bunch of times. This is one of my favorite songs. But basically, try to copy that. So I'm going to go ahead and play the melody real quick uh, for the first verse. And it's pretty much the same for the second verse, when, whenever you repeat it. And then um, the two chords that you're going to be going back and forth here are the same ones that you did in the intro, which is D flat major 7 and then B flat minor 7. Sometimes I omit the third there, and then the app thinks that it's, you know, B flat dominant seven, but no no third, but it's literally just B flat minor seven. So that's how I would personally voice it. Okay? So here we go. Alright, 
So that's the first half of the verse, and then the second half of the verse has this E flat minor 9 chord in it. Right? So it's going to be E flat, B flat, E flat, B, uh, G flat, B flat, and then D flat, and then F natural. Right? And the melody goes a little bit like something like this. So I'm going to go measure before. So that's just F, G flat, F. And you stay in that for a while, and then you play this this uh, phrase. Right? And you just go back to that D flat major seven after you're done with the E flat minor nine. What I would do uh, whenever I play this song is I go from the D flat major seven for one measure, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, to the D flat, just a regular D flat. Creates that kind of motion between seven, the seventh, and then the the root. So from the beginning of the verse. guess what? You pretty much got the first and the second verse down because you just repeat that all over again. I'll always look out for you. That's So here comes the chorus. So the chorus is is just like I said before, just like the intro, basically. Um, you're just doing a couple things different, including the rhythms different. So let me show you here real quick what I mean by that. So I'll go ahead and play it first and I'll explain. So essentially, we're doing the same thing that we did in the intro in the left hand, except we're arpeggiating it to create this kind of motion, kind of feeling of, you know, like floaty feeling. So let me show you what I'm doing. So again, if you remember the chords from the beginning, if not, go ahead and go back and, and try to relearn those chords or uh, review those chords again. But basically, E flat major, minor 7, this F minor over C, this D flat. And then this, uh, a, essentially, A flat minor over E, and G diminished, G flat mi mi major 7, sorry. And you repeat it one more time. And G flat major 7 at the very end there. Okay. So the trickiest part about the chorus is filling up those voicings on your right hand and making up for the lack of, um, I, want, I don't want to say harmonic content, but the, the lack of context, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So um, whenever you're playing the melody, so that, that goes something like D flat to F. So D flat F. F, E flat, F, D flat, right? I would just start, I would just start practicing by doing exactly just the melody and the left hand. That's how I would do it. And this part is D flat, A flat. So 
So that figure there is is just a bunch of grace notes. So G flat to A flat, and then climb back down to G flat, F natural, and an E flat, uh, grace note to F. So, right? That's how that's how Chris Martin sings it in a record, but any, any anything works there. So. Yeah, like I was saying before, the comp most complicated part about this is making sure to fill out those voicings with the rest of your fingers on your right hand. So while you're playing that melody, and this is all with the right hand. Sorry, messed up a little there. Right? So in all in context, um, pretty much you're just going to want to practice just playing the melody by itself. And if you can't do the chords on your right hand with the melody, that's completely fine. Um, it's just something that I personally do whenever I play this piece. So, so I, I, actually, let me explain one more thing. At the first half of the chorus, I just play an octave higher on my left hand. And I omit the harmony on my right hand. Just a melody. And I go an octave lower here. And I start filling out those harmonies. So that's pretty much how I, I would play it. So. Okay, so again, just to review, basically the chorus is the same as the intro, except you play it twice. You play that moving figure, and, and then you play it again, and then you're back to basically uh, the, the second part of the intro, which is just hovering between the D flat and, and the B flat minor. So after you're done with the chorus, you're just basically going to start doing that bass line again. And you're back to the, th the third verse now this time. So the third verse uh, is pretty much the same through the beginning. My heart is yours. Sorry for my awful singing. It's you that I hold on. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Two, two. Yeah, it's a B flat there. So hold on to that's what I'll do. And then here you go to the beginning of the next verse, and the next verse is a little bit different from uh, what we were playing before. Um, so it's a it has a little bit of a variance in the melody basically, but I will go ahead and play it and explain it. That's just the last part of that verse right there. So basically what he's doing, um, if, you, if you look back on the melody, or if you play the melody again, he's just playing a variation of that basically by going higher in the voice. Right? So let me, let me go ahead and teach you that mel melodic part right there. So it's A flat, D flat, C, D flat C, right? And that's the rhythm for that. Okay, and that the tag at the end is B flat, A flat. So in context. This part 
is basically a um, it's an A flat minor nine uh, with an eleventh on it, so A flat minor eleven. And in that 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 mel melody is playing that eleventh, and you're just climbing back down mel melodically. So uh, A flat, G flat, F, A flat, D flat. And then you do this figure, which is D flat, B flat, D flat, B flat, A flat. So. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and play this last verse. So yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for that that last part of the verse, and that, I believe that's the last verse uh, before you know the end, the chorus, the last chorus, and then the end of the song, which is uh, uh, the outro part, I guess, is what would you call it. So on to the next verse, which is pretty much identical, the same as uh, the last, or sorry, last chorus is what I meant to say, the last chorus. It's just identical to the last chorus. So let me go ahead and play that, and let me explain to you. Oh, why it's identical, or let me show you how it's identical. See, pretty much, once you learn the first chorus, you're pretty much good on a second chorus, okay? So once you get to the end of the, for the second chorus, uh, you're going to go ahead and play this tag, or this pickup. And that's basically him saying, and I saw a sparse. And right, that's just basically B flat, F, B flat, A flat. And you're going to basically repeat that for the outro. And the chords on the outro is literally just back and forth between that D flat major 7 and B flat minor 7. Right, so here's 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 how it sounds. And I saw sparks. And you might have noticed that I added a little grace note from that D, B flat to that A, a natural and then back to A flat. Because that's essentially when he's singing that, he, he is gliding his voice and it kind of sounds like a glissando there. So you, you're, you're free to do it that way or you can just do it this way. Right? It just doesn't matter which, which, which way you do it. And that's up to you as a create as a creative that's up to you all right so at the very last of the repeat there after you repeat that a bunch of times and then you're going to play this little line that's f e flat d flat and that's him saying see me now okay and then this is the this is what we call the actual outro So that line basically is just climbing up and then going back down. So um, C me now, and it's F, G flat, A flat, B flat, and then you transition to the next word, and then the grace note is F to E flat, and then D flat, and you do it over again. I 
messed up there, but you get the point. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just practice that a couple times and, uh, see the thing about, uh, songs like this is that you're, you're really free to creatively explore, um, rhythmically especially and see how you're able to dance around, uh, motifs like... Basically, with my left hand here, I'm just highlighting those, 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 uh, that melody. Okay. And guess what? That's pretty much the end of the song right there. You just end on that D flat major seven chord after you're done with that outro. however you want to end it okay so just to recap basically a very very quick recap the intro goes a little bit like this and the intro and the chorus actually is uh identical and it goes a little bit like this these chords right let me play one more time And then the second intro and the verse uh, just hovers between these two uh, chords. Right? And then the bass line is this again. And then um, that verse, or sorry, the verse is is pretty much that, just without that bass line. And and you're you're free to pause this video and go back and see what I was doing there in the melody. But uh, again, this is a quick recap. So let me go ahead and keep going forward. And then the chorus is going to be this motif. And then um, the third and the fourth verse, or rather the third verse, uh, is has a little bit of a weird um, second or third ending, rather, uh, to it, and it goes a little bit like this. Okay, and then moving on, there's this little tag to the, uh, the, I guess, the bridge before the outro. Right, and you just repeat that a couple times. And then you're going to go ahead and play this um, tag, and finally the outro. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole entire song. Um, I know I, I went a little quick there, but again, this was supposed to be an advanced tutorial. And uh, for people who have um, a little bit experience um, um, improvising, so the best thing you can do if if you don't have any 
uh, improvisation um, skills, I guess, <laughs> is to check out a bunch of YouTube channels. I'll put some of them right here right now in between me in front of my face. Check them out. They are a good resource to figuring out how to improvise and how to um, basically how to make stuff up on the spot, which is, you know, improvisation, obviously. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching and uh, for uh, always listening to this song. This is my most viewed uh, song or cover of this song on my channel. And I really appreciate you guys for uh, for sticking with it and watching it every now and then. Um, I will do another cover of this song very soon and record it, hopefully, and then uh, see if I can um, make some sheet music, because I know some of you guys read sheet music, and improvisation is not really your thing, and that's the thing about me is that I'm a jazz major, um, I am a jazz musician, so I, I, I tend to improvise almost everything, so yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it, thanks you all, thank, thanks you all. thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next video, see ya!